Hello folks, in this video I'm going to continue working on this tic-tac-toe project in JavaScript and I'm just going to add in some finishing touches to it. The main one being a game over condition and then some text to display who's won and lastly a button that allows me to reset this. Right now I have to keep refreshing if I want to restart but it'd be nice if you could just have some JavaScript that clears the grid and sets everything back to zero again. Now the first thing I want to do is add that game over condition. So I need to make sure that I add a variable to keep track of the game state first of all. So we'll go up to this right at the beginning where I've got this define game variable section and I'm going to add another one, say let game over equal false. So it's going to be starting off as a false variable, which is what you would expect. Game over is false to begin with. And then when one of the win conditions are met, we can set that back to true and say that's the game finished. So now I need to go back into my code for my, uh, results. This function check results is where I'm looking at whether one of the players is one or if there's a tie and at the moment i'm just using this console log to just output the information but i don't really want to be doing that what i actually want to do is call a function at this point that handles the game over so let's add a new function and then we'll come back and add it in so i'll add a comment to say function to end the game and display the result say function end game and it does need to take one argument, so this argument is going to be winner. It needs to know who has won or whether there's been a tie. And the first thing it needs to do is trigger a game over event. So add a comment to say trigger game over. And that is just done by setting that variable to true. So game over is now true. And I'm going to keep this console log information for now. I'm not going to put anything out onto the screen just yet. So what I want to do is first of all look for the game over conditions. I want to know whether one of the players has won the game or if it's a tie. So we can add a little check in here. Add a comment to say check if check if game ended in a tie. And that's going to be controlled by this winner variable here. So if winner is equal to zero, that means that it's a tie. So nobody has won. So we can just put this console log, move that, or just copy it down to here for now. Otherwise, so else, one of the players has one. So we'll say console log, well, which one of these do I take? How do I know if it's player one or two? So I could say else if player one, else if player two, but instead I can just change this text to add the variable number into it. So I can say, use a backtick here and say player winner has one or she wins and that's okay for now i'll leave it like that but i need to now make sure that i'm calling this function within this check results function so rather than just output into the console i actually want to call that function instead so we'll go back up to each of these points where i'm saying player one or player two is one so if player one wins then we call end game and then the winner is one so we pass that argument in here then we do the exact same thing below but now, remember, I can't, I'm not going to say end game player minus one. I was just doing that internally so that I could keep track of the individual markers that are within this board data array. But actually, what I want to display on the screen is player two is one. So that's what I'm going to put in this function. So then I just carry on. I do the same thing here. Copy this down and replace this console log. And this one too. Replace that with a two. And then lastly, my tie. So this just becomes a zero. So if nobody is one, then that zero is going to feed through here and it's going to console log. Well, it's a tie. So let's try this again. Refresh that and keep track of the console. And there we go. Player one wins. I can keep playing though. Player two wins. So it's displaying the information correctly and it's passing it through, registering that there is one of the two winners. There is one little issue here that's not immediately obvious though which is that this function here is going to go through all of these checks and then run the function as many times as you need to. So what you could happen is that if on the very last click, the player, one of the player wins, but is also the very last tile, then that's going to trigger it twice. So it's going to say that the player has won, either player one or player two, but this condition is also going to be true, meaning that, well, let's see if I can give an example. So if I can try to win the game with the last click, so let's put across there, circle there, cross there, circle there, and across here. It says player one wins, but it also says it's a tie because both of those conditions are met. Player one did win, but there's also no tiles left. So it's a tie. So what I actually want to do is as soon as one of these conditions is met, 
I want to come out of this function. I don't want to keep checking for the other conditions. So after each of these end game calls, I want to return. So return just means that we stop the function where we're at. We've got what we need. We call this end game and then that's it. We don't need to do any more checks to see if maybe there's a draw or if player two is one. So just add a return after each of these end game calls. So now if I try this again, see, how did I do it? X cross there, circle there, something like that, I think. Now it only registered the fact that player one has won the game. So there are no cells left, so it could be a tie, but player one has managed to make a complete column, therefore that's the correct outcome. Okay, so it's registering the correct outcome, but is it still letting me play after a game over? Well, the answer is yes. Now the reason that's happening is, yes, I'm setting the game over variable to true at the end of it, but I'm never actually checking whether or not this is true or false when I'm playing the game. So when I look to place markers within this function here, this function place markers, the only check that I'm doing before I put a marker down with this code is, is whether the current cell is empty or not. So as long as there's a space in one of the cells still to play, it allows me to keep playing. So I actually want to add another check here. So it's going to be if that current cell is a zero, meaning that there's a space to play, and game over is still false, only then do we do this. So if I run this again and try and recreate that, so that should be my game over condition met. I can't keep clicking. So I'm clicking on these cells, but I'm not able to put anything in there because the game over condition has now been met. It's now set to true. So this section of code, it can't run anymore. Well, that's fine and it is working correctly, but it just kind of looks like the game is hung up. There's no feedback to the player. There's nothing to say that the game is over and somebody has won. So let's add that in now. Now I need to go back into my HTML document and add in a little section here that's going to cover that text underneath. So I've got my section here for the board. So this covers all of those cells. Well, underneath, I'm just gonna add another tag, which is going to be a H1. And I'll give us an ID of result. So this is going to be the result of the game. Now, I don't want any content in it to begin with, so I just simply open and close that tag with nothing in it. If I save it, nothing happens. There's no text here to display. That text is actually going to come from the JavaScript. So we go back to the script document and go to the, which function is it? The, the end game function. Rather than console logging the result, because let's face it, that's not where you want the information to be, you want to be able to output this straight into the HTML. So I'm going to go back and add that into the DOM. So first I need to pull that H1 element into my script. So just underneath where I've added my game over condition being set to true, I'm going to call through this result element. So I'll say result element, uh, oops, I forgot const at the beginning. Result element is equal to document.get element by ID. Now this one is different to what I used above. So when I was calling in the cell, I said query selector all. I used that because there's a whole bunch of them. In this case, I only have one, so I could query selector this as well, but I'm just gonna get the element by ID instead. It, it's up to you which one you prefer to use. Now the ID of the element that I want is result. So that's the ID that I've given it. So here, if I just put result, I'm gonna pull that through. And now instead of console logging, I can take this result element and I can add text to it. So let's just say result element dot inner text. So you could do inner HTML instead, but I don't really need to do that. I just need to add text into the H1 tag. So if winner is nobody, meaning that it's a tie, well, the text is going to be, it's a tie. And if one of the players has one, then we want to get rid of this and say result element dot inner text is equal to just the same as what I had with the back tick. So player, then we put in a variable in here, which is winner wins. Okay, well, let's see how this actually looks. So let's close one of these out. Player one wins. Okay, it worked, but it doesn't look very good. It's come up on the right hand side and it's not styled at all. So let's address both of those things. Now, the reason it's coming up on the right hand side, let's get rid of this, is because the body when we styled it initially is displayed as a flex container. So by default, what this does is just take all the items within it. So in this case, it's the section and now this H1 tag and just displays them side by side 
what I actually want them to be is displayed on top of each other. So I want them to be in a column rather than a row. So underneath display flex, I'm going to change the flex direction to column. So now it's going to display them on top of each other. There we go. And now I'd like to just put a little bit of space between them. So I'll use gap here, I'll say one rem, and that just gaps them up a little bit from each other. And now let's actually style that element itself. So we'll go down here, just underneath all the rest of the styling. It had an ID, so remember, instead of a full stop, I now have to use the pound symbol. Say result, that's the ID that it had. Let's just give it some sizing. So width of 200 pixels, height of two rem. Okay, that's a bit too big. So font size, 1.5 rem, that's better. Change the color of that, so we'll go with white. And lastly, you can see it's not actually centered. So text align center. There we go. So now that's sitting in the middle and it's looking pretty good. So if we go back to the script, save this, that re refreshes everything. And now let's try and get player two to win. Okay, so that works. Refresh again, see if I can get a tie. Oh, <laughs> that was a pretty bad attempt at a tie. Uh, let's see, it's actually not that easy sometimes to tie. Okay, there we go. So all the conditions seem to be working and it's displaying the text correctly. So the last thing to do then is just to add a little button down here that resets the game. So we'll go into the HTML first of all. Underneath the H1 tag, I'm going to add a button tag. Give this an ID of restart and I'm going to put some text on it, which will say restart game. Close that out, and there we go. We got a little button here. It looks pretty rubbish by now, but it's just the default styling on it. So now we can add in a little bit of styling to it specifically. So back in the style sheet, we'll target that button tag. Let's see, button. Let's give it a background color first. So a background color of yellow green. Okay, let's get rid of that border. So border none order radius just to round it off a little bit 0 0.5 rem uh, it's very very small let's inherit the font that i've set for the body so font family inherit and let's make it quite a bit bigger so font size 1.5 rem there we go we can actually read it now change the color to black actually oh that's already black what am i doing here yeah, it's already black by default. I think I must have played around with the color a little bit. So we'll get rid of that. And just add a bit of padding. So 0.7 rem top and bottom and one rem left and right. There we go. That's looking a bit better. And I just I like to add a hover stick to buttons as well, typically, because it just looks a little bit horrible, just a static thing like that. So let's say button hover. Well, first of all, let's change the cursor to a pointer. So it goes into a little hand and change the background color to green okay there we go that's a lot better so that's pretty much it that's a setup it, of course it doesn't actually do anything yet so if i put some markers down click restart nothing happens so the button is just visual at the moment we need to add in a little section within the script to handle what happens when i click on it now this section is just going to be the restart so i'm going to add another comment here to say restart game and first of all, like with the other elements, I need to first of all pull it from my HTML into the script. So we say const restart restart button is equal to document dot get element by ID, and the ID of this was restart. Okay, so now that I've pulled the button in, I need to add an event listener on it to see that whether I've clicked on it. Add event listener to restart button so we say restart button dot add event listener the event i want to look for is click so actually it's pretty much the same as what i've done with the cells previously so if we've clicked then let's add a little function here for what we want to do to it well first of all let's just make sure it's working so console log restart i like to log the console log these as i go just to see if there is any problems later on you can kind of see where you might have gone wrong ahead of time okay so i know that it's working every time i click it's registering restart so that's working fine we can get rid of this 
Now the way a restart is going to be handled is that I basically just want to reset all of my variables back to zero. So I want to restart everything or reset everything back to these starting conditions that I had at the beginning. So for example, the board data needs to be reset to have just zeros in it. It needs to clear all of those crosses in the circles. Player one is going to start again. So it's going to be player one that begins. And of course the game over variable has to restart so that we can play again. So I can pretty much just copy all this down and just modify it a little bit when I get down to here. So if the button has been clicked, let's add a comment to say reset game game variables, paste that in and I'm just going to fix the indentation a little bit. So the board data needs to be reset, but the variable has already been created. So I don't need to put let at the start of it. I just say board data, all of the contents and it just reset back to zeros in every row and every column. So that's going to reset all of that. That's fine. And then the game variables, well, again, I can get rid of the lets because I'm just resetting them back to a different value. So player goes back to one. So player one begins and game over is false. So actually I should be able to test this out now. If we just save that, go in here and I'll just put some variables in there. Go inspect and we'll say console log board data. Okay, so it's giving me my array and it says I've got one minus one zero. So it's corresponding and it's picking up correctly. Now if I press restart game, nothing's changed. Nothing happened there. But what if I console log that again? Console log board data again. Well, notice now the array has reset. So all of those are zeros. So it has happened. It has, when I click this, it's refreshed everything, put it all back to zero. It's just not updated all of this here. So none of this has registered the fact that, oh, the board is being cleared. So I shouldn't be displaying zeros and, and crosses everywhere. Well, to do that, I need to go back through all of these cells here, all of these classes, and make sure that if they've added a, a cross or a circle class to them, that those are all removed. So I can't just call my, which function was it up here? This draw markers function. I can't just call that one again because this just adds elements. So this adds classes to my existing elements. It doesn't remove them. So what I want to do here is just add a little section that says create, uh, no, not create, reset, reset game board. And then in the same way as I previously iterated through all those cell elements initially, I just do it again. So I say cell elements dot for each. So go through each of the cells and apply this function to them. Well, the function is we take each of the cells and this time, instead of saying class list dot add, as I did above, I remove. So I remove any reference of cross or circle. It doesn't matter whether some of them have it, some of them don't. Maybe some of these are still, they don't have a circle or a cross on them. It's just going to look through each one. If there's a cross or if there's a circle, it'll remove it. And it's going to put it back to this default setting here. Okay, so let's test this out now. If I add in some markers, restart, and there we go, they're all reset. I know that the, the board data has already been reset, so all of that has disappeared, but now it's actually clearing the markers as well. It's not, however, clearing this text. That's stayed here. So we need to make sure that we put this back to, well, blank, nothing. So after we've reset the game board, we also want to reset outcome text. So my result element dot inner text. So remember, I'm doing the exact same thing as I've already done up here. Previously, I said to set that to either it's a tie or one of the players is one. Well, now I just set that to an empty string. So now let's see if one of the players can win. Oh, I've messed it up. If I put a cross there and a cross there, player one wins, restart game. What have I done? Result element Hmm, we're done wrong here. Did I just forget to save? Nope, I have done something wrong. What is it? So it looks like I made a bit of a silly mistake here. If I go into the console, it will show what the error is. So it's saying that the result element is not defined. Now, I know that it is defined because I just defined it within this function above. 
However, this is where we get into scoping. I've defined it within the function, which means that it's not available to the global document. So actually what I want to do is get rid of it from here. This was a bit of a silly mistake. And we cut that from there and I'm just going to move it right to the top where I've got my cell elements being called from the DOM. So I'll just add that in here as well. And maybe just add a little comment to it. So I'll just say pull in the result text from DOM. So now because I'm doing this just at the main document level, it's going to be accessible for the functions. So this end game function will still be able to use it, but this section here will also be able to use it. Okay, so if I save this again, and let's try that one more time. So cross here, cross there, restart. So now it's going away and it's all clearing properly. And that's it. That's a working version of tic-tac-toe in JavaScript. So I hope you found this useful. And if you did, then please leave a like and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.